Well, friends, my name is Michelle Dare. I'm the Senior Care Counselor here at Arbor Terrace Exton, a brand new senior living community here in Exton, Pennsylvania. We're so excited to be a part of the community and to work with you in making our residents feel special and welcome here. I look forward to seeing you on Mother's Day. We're going to be bringing a special surprise over to you and feel free to stop in any time and Come and see us in our beautiful community and meet with our residents. Hope you're having a great day. The peace of the Lord be with you, Hopewell family and friends near and far. I'm Vicki Pry, pastor of spiritual formation, and I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. We are still in the season of Easter, and with that comes spring new life and it's all around me look at this it's just stunning here in the hopewell labyrinth the cemetery and i'm reminded of jesus ability to make all things new what a blessing it is for us to worship in this beautiful space it's mother's day 2021 welcome one and all please join me in this opening prayer Faithful God, we lift our praise to you along with the broader community. We recognize this special day known as Mother's Day. And we thank you for the women in our lives who nurture us, who now or in the past have mothered us in many and varied ways. Holy Spirit, in this time of worship, work in our hearts, open our minds so that we might see ourselves more clearly and strive to follow you more closely. Give us ears to hear what you long to speak to us right here, right now. And it is in the name of our beloved Jesus that we pray. Amen. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on the Savior, see the image of love.
Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, in which Paul is writing to the Corinthians about agape love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. But for as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it too will come to an end. This is the word of the Lord. 
Mother's Day 2021. And in our faith life, it's also called the Festival of the Christian Home. Don't know if you knew that, but it's on our United Methodist calendar, Festival of the Christian Home. So first, I offer Mother's Day blessings to all. In our culture, this celebration is important and it's joyful for many. But let's be honest, for others, the day can be challenging and sometimes heart-wrenching, right? So there are two sides to this coin for sure. Regardless of how you experience Mother's Day, it is my hope that the Lord will put something new and something meaningful on your heart as we worship. So um, many of you were following our most recent sermon series and Bible study called Made for Mission, Living with Purpose on Purpose. I found those messages and the study conversations to be really, really powerful. And as I was reviewing my notes, the notes I took across the weeks, I marveled at the way the Lord worked through Pastor Amy's words and Pastor Eddie's words as they helped us explore those very familiar scripture texts. And I have to tell you, God worked in my heart in such a way that I was able to hear something new in those well-worn passages. And then too, I couldn't ignore this common thread that wove throughout each one of those texts. And I, I wasn't surprised. And it clearly is a truth that we have heard over and over and over again. And here is that truth. God loves us and we are called to love one another. It's that simple and it's that complex. So on this Mother's Day, this Festival of the Christian Home Day, we're going to talk about love. And we're going to talk about our attitudes concerning relationships, whether those relationships are within our, our homes, uh, with our extended families, our communities, our church, our workplaces, our friendships, our acquaintances. And here's what I know. No matter how many times I or another preacher talks about love and relationships, no matter how many times we hear it or how much we think we know about it, you can never hear it enough. I'll speak for myself when I say that I continually need to learn it, to relearn it, and surely to practice trying to live it. What we are talking about here is the gospel, the truth, the good news, and the very challenging news for us as lovers of God and followers of Jesus. Love. Love is the core of it. Love is the heart of it, the metric of it, as Pastor Amy said a couple of weeks ago. Love is the plumb line of our faith and for our living. Love is the bottom line, and it is our highest calling. So much so that depending on which translation of Scripture you're reading, the word love, listen to this, is mentioned in the Bible at the very least 310 times, and at the most, 898 times across the Old and the New Testament. Using yet another well-worn and familiar uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, you just heard this text, and that's where we're going today. But before I go any further, I'm going to take a little time out here to note that uh, I'm thinking that there are some of you out there who are thinking, or maybe you're saying it out, like, out loud right now, good grief. It seems the only things that Pastor Vicki ever talks about are relationships and love. Am I right? Are you thinking that? For those of you who have been around for a while, I know you're thinking that. And guess what? You're mostly right. There are times when I do expand my repertoire, but here I am again talking about love and relationships. And I got to tell you, I offer no apologies. But let me say this. If you're ready to tune out because you think you've heard it all before, I'm asking you to stay tuned, either literally or figuratively, because here's the deal. This is not the gospel according to Vicki Pry. This is the gospel. And it begins with this. 
God's love for us, this immeasurable, unstoppable, relentless love of God for what God created, especially God's people. Gospel writer John captures it beautifully when he, when he says in John 3, 16, say this with me if you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have life eternal. And then that leads to the highest of callings from the bottom of line of the line to the highest of callings that we would love others. 15th chapter of that same gospel, John goes on to capture Jesus' words this way. Jesus said, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Love each other. All across the pages of the New Testament, we hear this same command in one form or another, and we see what it looks like, how it lives and moves and breathes when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, the perfect example. Love each other. Love each other. Love each other. You got it? Great. But here we are, and it's 2021, and life has been crazy, and some of us forget, maybe selectively forget, this call to love. Because, of course, it's hard. Back to um, Scripture. I want to talk about this letter of Paul's. Interestingly, Paul has paused in the middle of his fairly harsh reprimanding of the community in Corinth uh, uh, to wedge in this very poetic discourse, this 13th chapter. You see, uh, it seems that this early church, these people from a lot of different backgrounds were just struggling to get along. And in the midst of this discord, they were also priding themselves on their individual giftedness, their holiness, their spiritual achievements, things such as uh, some people's ability to prophesy, others uh, speaking in tongues, others performing miracles, others striving to be a servant, sometimes even to the point of death. In the 14th chapter, Paul resumes his admonishments and reminds them that those things are not enough to sustain community. But in this particular chapter, chapter 13, Paul is talking about love. He talks about love as the hidden ingredient. And he reminds them and he reminds us that everything, everything else flows out of love. That when we, when we first pursue love, live in love, act in love, then the longing for and and the gaining of other things, like spiritual gifts, just flows out of that love. Paul offers this passage as a way to remind the community that love is necessary if they are going to survive the often muddy, mucky waters of life and relationships. I'm wondering, is any of this sound applicable to our days and times? I wonder, do we ever get caught up in the stuff we do in the name of Jesus because they're good things to do? Do we? Do we ever criticize others because we feel justified to do so? Or because maybe we think we know better. Do we? 1 Corinthians 13. I I can't begin to tell you the number of times I've used this passage in the wedding uh, ceremonies I've officiated. I I I love it. I think it offers a beautiful foundation for a marriage. But we need to be reminded that Paul wasn't writing these words to some starry-eyed couple standing before a pastor on their wedding day. It didn't start there, and it doesn't stop there. 
And I'm confident that Paul couldn't have anticipated that this chapter, his writing, these verses would end up in some lovely counted cross-stitch framed art that hangs on so many walls in so many churches and so many homes. Don't think he was thinking of that. And I guarantee you that Paul never could have guessed that I, and maybe you as well, have a signboard in my home with the love is passage painted on it. And I have to tell you, it's not there for decoration. It's there because I need daily, sometimes hourly, a reminder of what love really looks like. Pastor and writer Terry Daly observes this, and she writes, Unfortunately, this 1 Corinthians 13 passage has become completely domesticated in such a way that it loses any power to change us. And sadly, the familiarity often breeds disregard, end quote. Loses the power to change us? Is it so, dear God? In our efforts to live our lives day in and day out, facing these challenges of everyday living, these people with whom we have to live and work and be, these encounters with others, the, the voices that don't resonate with us. God, aren't we doing our best? Mercy, what do you want from us, God? And God reminds us, this is what love looks like. Strive for this. Let your mind and your heart and your thinking and your words and your actions be like Jesus. So let's, uh, let's set the record straight here. The love that Paul describes in uh, 1 Corinthians in this 13th chapter, this is perfect love. Listen in part again. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud or rude. It is not self-seeking or easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs and does not delight in evil. Love rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always perseveres. Love never fails. This love that Paul describes is the love of God for you and for me. It is the love that Jesus poured out when he walked on this very earth. And it is the love to which we are to aspire, to strive for, to work toward in this life, hard as that may seem. Families, marriages, community, school, work, church, we're in this together, but we're in it with those who are different than we are, right? And it is, God, it is really hard work, this trying to be more like Jesus, to love like Jesus. But let me say, across this past year, particularly, we we collectively have experienced challenges and, and trials like never before. It has become and will forever be a part of our history. And some of us have fared better than others, for sure. In some cases, relationships have been strengthened. And in other cases, our relationships with one another have been stretched and challenged and even broken. Dare I say, again, loving like Jesus is no small effort. But... But I am convicted that when there is discord, when there is disconnect, when there are differences, our God continually and consistently calls out to us to live out of, to act out of love as Christ loved. And you know what? That might mean thinking differently. That might mean living differently. It might mean letting go of our self-righteousness. It means remembering that God first loved us and that we are 
called to love one another. And surely uh, it means to be more like Jesus. Last week in her message, Pastor Amy reminded us that the, of the measure of grace that Jesus offers us completely deconstructs our intellectual understanding. And it calls us to a new way of understanding how we allow ourselves to receive grace and then to give grace to others. I want to say it's the same with love. It's impossible to wrap our heads around a God who would go to such lengths of love for us. But thanks be to that very same God for sending his son to show us, to demonstrate, to pour out perfect love. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to strive to live out that love in Jesus' name. Before I close, um, I want to share with you a conversation, part of a conversation that I had with a friend recently. Um, I, I know her to be a, a loving, kind person. She's following Jesus in the best ways that she possibly can. But she was sharing with me about the struggles that she was experiencing with her extended family. And trust me, uh, these struggles aren't small, and they have spanned um, a good deal of her lifetime. And at one point she said to me, I often find myself keeping a distance from them because our interactions can become toxic and I find that I have to protect myself. She said, I love them, I pray for them, and I pray for myself in my relationship with them. And I want to ask you this question. Do you possibly understand what this woman was talking about? Do you understand? And when it was all said and done, I assured her that she was living out the love of Jesus Christ in the best way that she possibly could. But I also know this. We're called to see each other through the eyes of Jesus. We are to be reminded that God loves us all, and that means all. But we can only control our own actions and thoughts. This Jesus kind of love may not always end in agreement or reconciliation, but it does mean that we can release judgment and that we can offer grace. And then we got to leave the rest to God. God is in charge of the rest. Patience, kindness, it does not boast. It is not proud or rude. It's not self-seeking or easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongdoings and it does not delight in evil. It rejoices in the truth. It always protects. It always trusts, always perseveres. Love, love never fails. Back to the wisdom of uh, Pastor Terry Daly. And she writes this and I quote, make no mistake. The love Paul's talking about here is not passive and fluffy. This kind of love is an up at dawn, feet on the ground, tools in hand, working kind of love. Jesus doesn't call us to an abstract sort of love. He calls us to love in the midst of the messiness of real life relationships. This kind of love can build community. This kind of love nurtures positive interactions. This kind of love is exhibited in the way, ways in which we talk to each other, treat each other. This kind of love will lead us toward wholeness. This love, in the end, will not let us down." End quote. Perfect love is all of those things. And when it's all said and done, love is the bottom line. God loves us. And it is also the highest calling, love one another. It is the good news to receive God's love. And it is the most challenging news to love like Jesus. That 13th chapter closes in this way. And Paul wrote, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. 
Now I, I only know in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. And so on this Mother's Day, this festival of the Christian home, and always, may it be for us that within our relationships, wherever, whenever, and with whomever, may all that we do be done in love. I believe love has the power to change us in the name of and for the sake of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please say with me this closing prayer. Gracious God, thank you for your love that is deeper and wider than we can ever imagine. You first loved us, your children, your creation, your beloved. And we hear the call to love one another as you have loved us, but often we struggle. As we end this time of worship, let us echo the words of the Apostle Paul. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Beautiful Jesus, may it be so. Amen and amen. Sky's a